Hello, my friends, David Kessler here, and welcome back to the studio. So, did you know, and you probably do, that each color has a warm version and a cool version? And a question that I get, particularly with when we're talking about, well, all colors, but particularly when we're talking about primary colors, and all the time I get the question from from students, how do I know if the color is warm or if the color is cool? So, I thought I would address that today uh, and just take a look at, you know, the primary colors, the warm version, the cool version, and go through the reasons that it is warm or cool and how you can tell that it's warm or cool. Now, we're going to do that uh, by looking at the palette. I'm going to put some color out on the palette and take a look at that. And we're going to do that right now. Okay, here we are at the palette. So let's take a look at, you know, the typical primary colors that we all use uh, that most all manufacturers make. Now, I've got a warm column and a cool column, and we're going to start with the yellow. Now, typically with a cool yellow, most people would use cad yellow light, right? Cadmium yellow light. So for the warm... A lot of people would use cadmium yellow deep or Hansa yellow deep. And again, Hansa yellow light could be the cool. Now, neither one of these are those. This is a, a benzimidazolone yellow light. This is diralide yellow light, which are man-made pigments, which I like from Golden. Uh, but they're similar in, in color and value to uh, Hansa light, Hansa deep, cad deep, um, cad light. So... If we look at these two, you can tell that this one is cooler than this one. And you can tell that because this one appears to be on the greenish side. And a cool yellow is cool because it has green in it. And the warm yellow, and you can see this is much closer to orange. So yellow plus red makes it look more orange. So a cooler yellow is going to have the addition of red I mean, a warmer yellow, pardon me, is going to have the addition of red that makes it warmer. Now, if I had a primary yellow in here, which I don't use a primary yellow, but we could take that and add a little bit of red to it, and we would get this, and we add a little green, and we would get that. Okay? So this is going to have a little red in it, which makes it cool, warmer. This is going to have a little green in it that makes it cooler. All right? Now, let's move to the reds. Now, typically for, you know, a warm red, most people are going to use cadmium red medium. And that's what this is. Um, you know, there are other things like a pyro red. There's several different pyro, pyro reds. Um, there's, I don't know. I don't use all these other ones. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I don't know all the names. But this is the most common one. And it's a warmer red because it has orange mixed into the red to warm it up. Now this is a very stark contrast between the cooler red and this is quinacridone magenta but it could also be alizarin crimson. That's another common cool red that almost every manufacturer makes. And it's cooler because it has the addition of blue in it. You can tell this is more toward violet than this red is because it has more blue in it. So, you know, red plus blue makes violet, so it's closer to violet than this one. This one has orange, makes it warmer. This one has blue, which makes it cooler, okay? And, you know, after a while, you should be able to recognize these and know just by looking at, oh, yeah, that's cooler because it's a darker value and it's warmer. Or, <laughs> I'm sorry, it has blue in it, so it's cooler. You have to pardon me with the warm and the cool. I, even I get mixed up. All right, so let's look at the blues. A cool blue, this is cerulean blue, but typically it would be cerulean blue, phthalo blue, manganese blue. There's tons of cool blues. But when it comes to warm blue, there's really only one, and that's ultramarine blue. And the ultramarine blue, as you can see, is much warmer than this, and it's warmer because it has red in it. All right, so if you take you know, like a primary blue and add some red, you'll get an ultramarine blue, which is a warm blue. And I think people, people, mostly students have okay, they can okay, have understanding pretty, pretty well of these two. But when it comes to the blue, for some reason, they can't tell 
the warm from the cool. But remember, ultramarine blue is red. And the cerulean blue, the thalo blue, all the cool blues have green in it. So these blues are closer to blue-green, right, rather than blue. So they're going to tend to be toward blue-green. They're really all blue-greens, right, So because they have green in it. Now, cobalt's a kind of an odd bird because cobalt blue is neither warm and neither cool. It's a kind of a, I call it a neutral blue. It's closer to a primary blue. So if you want a good primary blue that's neither warm or cool, cobalt is the one that you need to use. And all manufacturers make, almost any paint manufacturer makes all of these colors. <clears throat> and these are the basics that everybody should have in their palette along with, of course, black and white. Uh, and typically, I'll use Mars Black and Titanium White. Right. So, typically, now, if we look at warm colors, typically, they're going to be warmer because they have the addition of either yellow, orange, or red. A cool color is going to be cooler because it has the addition of green or blue to it. Right? Addition of green or blue makes it cooler. The addition of yellow, red, or orange makes it warmer. So with a little practice, anybody can see the difference in these. And of course, when you mix them together, um, and you use, if I use this, you know, to mix green, for instance, uh, it's going to be very different than the green that I use to mix this one. And of course, it's going to matter which, which blue we use with it. So a good exercise that I like to do to see the effects of these is to take these three and use this as a primary to make your own color wheel, right? So you'd make 12 colors, uh, you know, nine additional colors from these and do the same thing here. Use the cooler colors and make a color wheel out of those and you'll see the difference immediately when you're mixing, um, uh, the difference between mixing this one and this one to get green and this one and this one to get green, right? Because this already has green in it, this already has green in it, so it's going to make a much more vibrant green than these two, which have red in them, which red, of course, is a complement of green. So those two are going to make a very muted green, right? Because the, the, the red is going to neutralize a lot of the green. But anyway, this is a good exercise to learn which ones are which, and I hope it was helpful for you. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.